Welcome back, folks. I'm Patrick Thomas, sitting here with photographer and filmmaker Haroon Medinovich. Thank you for joining us. And you're on a special journey that began in northern Arizona. Why has it brought you all the way to Maine? Uh, so uh, me and a partner of mine, shooting partner of mine, uh, Gavin Heffernan, who's an LA-based filmmaker, uh, we decided to embark upon a bit of a journey uh, to explore light pollution in the United States in particular. And uh, we're both filmmakers and photographers, and our passion lies in particular with astrophotography, or photography of the stars. And we found, being both LA guys, that it's very hard to come by anymore uh, in this country. And obviously, if you're in a major city and you look up, you don't see the stars anymore. Us being very passionate uh, astrophotographers, we decided to do a much, much larger project than just pretty pictures and actually explore this thing that's been chasing us out of LA, which is light pollution, and that's affected much of the United States, actually majority of the United States at this point. And um, it's uh, taken us obviously to East Coast because East Coast is the most light polluted uh, uh, place in America. And people ask, what, what is this light pollution? And light pollution merely means all the lights we use in the cities or any electrical light. We actually spend a lot of energy sending a lot of light into space for no reason uh, whatsoever. And that causes this uh, uh, phenomenon that some refer to as sky glow or light pollution, where we actually drown out all the stars in the sky and we can't really see anything up there, especially the Milky Way is something we can't see. We might see the moon, we might see a couple of major stars or planets, but by and large we can't really see the skies anymore. And uh, Maine happens to be a very lucky state because it's the only state in all of East Coast that majority of the state still retains its dark skies because of the relatively few people here, relatively few cities. And the title of it is Sky Glow. Why specifically, considering that you have to go and see a lack of light pollution in these dark sky locations, did you come up with that sort of name for this project? Well, with Sky Glow, it was obviously the, the uh, when we started thinking about our predicament as filmmakers out of LA, you know, we started asking questions, why can't we see the stars? Here, Sky Glow, it seems interesting because what we do see up there is Sky Glow. It seems like the sky is glowing down on us. But it wasn't so much that we wanted to discuss merely the problem, we wanted to just discuss the idea that there's something called stars out there that a lot of people haven't seen. I mean, here in Maine, we see them, but it, a lot of people that are born, grew up in LA, for example, right. in New York, they've never seen them don't in Don't know life. what a star in the sky is actually like. They just don't know. And, and you would ask a lot of people in LA, have you ever seen the Milky Way? And they're just looking at you. I mean, it seems like we, we always say Milky Way has become like the unicorn. You can never see it anymore right. with your naked eyes. And you really, really have to go out rurally. You're going to be shooting and filming, working in Acadia National Park, why choose that specifically for a location and what will you be doing in the park when working on this project? So Acadia and uh, a couple of spots that I found interesting about Maine were Baxter, which is just north, uh, mm -hmm. or, and that was a very dark sky park, a fully dark sky park. Acadia happens to find itself in this sort of predicament uh, where the park itself is trying to maintain uh, dark skies. They have a policy and when we call something a dark sky area we sometimes mean also that it's an area that has lighting ordinances meaning there's rules about what kind of lighting is being used and often it's about lights pointing straight down and not letting all the lights escape into the atmosphere. On the federal properties the lights are managed properly. They're not being blasted into the atmosphere. Part of being in a national park is to be able to see things at night. That's part right. of the nature element. That's why you go there. That's why you go there, exactly. So it's a, it is a very unique park, and if you just look at the map of Acadia there, you notice that almost all around it are little living areas. It still maintains some of its visibility of the skies, but it's not perfect visibility. So my interest of shooting there a little bit is to show this sort of struggle between the NPS, a little bit of national parks, and kind of the, the living areas around them. But shooting from the park side or towards the park side, you start getting a sense. I mean, you have this place that attempts to maintain some sort of a non-light polluted environment, but then it can't really do that because of the surrounding environment. And how many more locations do you have in Maine and how much longer until you wrap up this project? So we got another uh, six or seven months worth of shooting, and that includes about six or seven major left areas of dark skies on East Coast that are left. We, most of us haven't seen the Milky Way, and I think it's a transformative experience to be able to see it. It's just something that our ancestors have seen, and it's shaped the civilization as we know it. Without the stars, we wouldn't be here. We know that much, and it's shaped both sciences and religion. 
So it's, it's fascinating, but we hardly see it anymore. So we want to get people out there a little bit. Right on. And certainly it uh, would be a shame to have a generation of people, and, and especially young children, not have that enjoyment of looking in the skies and being able to see something as beautiful as the Milky Way. Haroon, thank you for joining us. We'll be back in just a moment, folks. Don't go away.